Hey, Stevie Yoni here doing a uh, Greatest Hits of Junkyard Crawl. We call this one Wagon's Ho. I love station wagons. And uh, did you know that in 1951, 3.3% of all cars sold in America were station wagons. Steel-bodied wagons, which were a major phenomenon after World War II, as growing baby boomer families discovered that a car with a long roof had extra cargo capacity and handled the family as well as the groceries. So wagons became a big deal. By 1959, 16 0.9% of all cars sold in the country were wagons. So from 3.3 to 16.9%, wagons were the minivans of the 50s, 60s, and 70s before the minivan arrived in the 80s and kind of put the wagon out to pasture. But again, in this video, you'll see five really cool station wagons, Mopars, from the Great Texas Mopar Board Auction event that happened back on October 13, 2021. These cars are all gone. They're all sold, so don't bid on them. Uh, and again, it was Spanky Astor's free Freedom Car Auctions that hosted this event. It was all online. I was there. And would you believe that this beautiful 61 Plymouth Savoy wagon sold for $2,760? Yes, $2,760. The price of a set of tires for a modern car. But again, this vehicle was one of five really cool wagons you're going to see in this video right now. But remember, don't bid. These. This is ancient history. These cars are gone, but they're still cool. Steve Mignani here for Astor Auctioneers and the Great Texas Mopar Horde Sale Event and Item 200, very unusual vehicle, 1962 Chrysler Newport Ambulance Conversion. Now here's the thing, you know, back in the day before we have cube van ambulances and custom built for the task, most ambulances were adaptations of station wagons. So this car began life as a Newport wagon. Uh, heavy duty suspension undoubtedly, but otherwise a pretty standard car. Let's take a peek at the front and the bumper is fantastic. The grille is very nice, a bit of a wave here, but again, it's intact and present. I love those canted headlights, which were uh, such a, st a startling uh, Chrysler touch. The pancaked hood <clears throat> and underneath, what do we have? <clears throat> okay, there it is. Yeah, the base 383 big block, two barrel carburetor, factory air conditioning, factory power drum brakes, power steering, and uh, yeah, heavy duty radiator with metal fan shroud and an early clutch fan right there. Again, 1962. Uh, nice firewall, inner fenders are absolutely rust-free, and in 1962, Newport will be a unitized construction car from the firewall back, so uh, subframe up front. But again, no rust on the front fenders, they're wonderful. Uh, down low here, the original paint, super solid. The magnet sticks, that bubble right there, another five years from now, that'll come through. But otherwise, there is no putty on this one, that's nice. Front door has this chip here, that's just a paint chip, there's no rust happening here. That is solid metal. Wonderful, all the way back to the here. And here we see Andrew's Ambulance Service. So this was once a privately owned ambulance. Let's pop the door open and look inside. And again, this is a Newport hardtop wagon, no fixed B pillar, so you roll the windows down and full air effect on both sides. There's that Chrysler bench seat up front, the Astra Dome. Plastic bubble over the speedometer, all of that present and accounted for. Pretty cool stuff. That lights up at night when it's new and functioning, which this will be one day soon again, I'm sure. Push button torque flight over here. Factory AM radio down low. Pretty cool. Again, factory radios are getting harder and harder to find. The floor on the driver's foot area here. Here are the original hubcaps. Nice to see those. The floor looks fantastic. I don't see any holes. That is pretty solid. The correct uh, octopus pad brake and gas pedal rubber covers are there. Uh, back door here is very nice. No rust down low. This magnet sticks to every inch of it. Uh, the rear quarter panel, that is just road rash right there. That's solid metal right there. No, no rust coming through. Same with the wheel lip. It's beautiful all the way around. That is fantastic. The magnet sticks to every inch of it. That is cool. Down low here, the quarter panel extension also pristine Texas metal. Look at that. No rust. I love the wraparound taillight. The bumper looks pretty good. It's a little bit deformed here, but again, easily straightened. Inside the back, this is the, uh, the business department here, the ambulance uh, flatbed. Again, fairly basic stuff. Um, looking pretty solid inside. The side covers are intact and present. Uh, the tailgate does show some signs of some rust and rust repair. 
kind of unusual. You see right here, uh, some gas welding somewhere along the line. This might have been dented or who knows what, but here is some plastic filler. Not sure what happened, but again, it's not so thick that the magnet won't stick. So yeah, not, not too bad. Something happened here. Let's see if we can open this up. This is the swing away. Yeah, cool. Take a look inside. And again, this is part of the ambulance. Oh, I know what that is. Okay, being an ambulance, this tailgate was made by the ambulance conversion company. That explains why we have the uh, patchwork under the skin. Again, this is not Chrysler stuff, but again, right here, this is where the ambulance company made the tailgate a swing out for the ambulance work. And again, the ambulance does have a taller roof line than would a Chrysler wagon. And again, this is all metal, but this is the work of the conversion company, maybe Miller Meteor, not sure what company. Anyway, the rear quarter panel is looking very good. Fantastic here, the magnet sticks. This here, again, here's some body filler right here. Maybe, yep, there was a dent. So this area right here, maybe it was hit in 1969, who knows? It's been repaired, but again, the magnet right here, it sticks, but there's some putty right there. Again, accident damage probably from way back when. But the quarter itself is in fantastic shape. Magnet wants to stick on all of it. Even down low here, this is a wonderful rust-free quarter panel, wow. And the door also, wonderful, no bubbles, no rust. Magnet sticks everywhere. Down on the rocker, beautiful stuff. And don't forget, anything you wanna see, just pause your computer and you can freeze the frame and get a closer look without me talking over the footage. Get the one at door, doesn't wanna open, but you can see here again, the hard top body, roll those windows down and you have full air going all the way through. Again, with the Anderson Ambulance Service logo here. Driver's side door, once again, beautiful. Rocker's great. Down low here, I do see some bubbling, but the magnet sticks to it, so that is honest first generation rust, as it were, not plastic, nobody's trying to hide anything here, it's honest. And the magnet sticks all the way up again on the fender, and the gold anodized is still here on this Newport uh, specific uh, aluminum trim. So that's the story of item number 200, a 1962 Chrysler Newport ambulance conversion. <laughs> Yanni here for Assetor Auctioneers and the Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction event with item number 21, a 1961 Plymouth Savoy four-door station wagon. Now, back in 1970 or so, these things were all over the country in parking lots from coast to coast. Well, now in 2021, you don't find them anymore, especially not like this. This one's an original paint car. Might have been resprayed, but it's the original color, but the grill is in fantastic condition. The bumper is beautiful, the headlight surrounds, and the trim here are pretty decent. You can hammer these out if you choose to, or just let it be as a survivor. And this item right here, that is so hard to find. I had a 61 Plymouth Savoy four-door. Couldn't find one of these anywhere, and it's present. I love how the gold anodized is still there on the medallion. Underneath the hood, we find... Oh, look at that. Okay, at Slant 6. This is the 225 Slant 6 in its second year of production in full-sized cars. The motor mounts are here. Uh, it's a three-speed manual car. More on that in a moment. Manual steering, manual drum brakes everywhere, one-barrel carburetor, and a heater. I do see also on the firewall an orange box, Mopar Performance, which means this car has been given an electronic distributor conversion. So no more points, that's okay. There's the orange box. Let's go around to the driver's side front door. And on our way, let's break out the magnet. Now these cars are, again, notorious for rust, but there's none, none. The magnet wants to stick on pretty much every surface. That's fantastic. Down low here, these things always turn to paper. Not here. Fantastic. Okay, oh, the stickers here. This uh, 12 of 1966, an inspection sticker, and more recently, 9 of 2006, last time the car was registered, apparently. Uh, let's look inside. And yeah, the door is uh, very, very nice. The interior paneling still present. Three-speed manual, shifter on the column. This is a very utilitarian slant six, three-speed manual family car. I do see lap belts, which were an option, factory option. Here's uh, the, uh, the male side of it here. The dashboard's looking good. It does have an aftermarket uh, AM, FM cassette stereo. This probably was a rated elite car when new. Uh, let's see if we can pop the rear door. Okay, there it is. And again, just rust-free 
everything's quite nice. A little bit of a bubble right there, not a big deal. The magnet does stick, so there's no putty here. It's honest first generation rust, as they say. Uh, all of the uh, back seat area and the cargo floor present and accounted for. Rear quarter panel and bodywork all quite nice. You can see down low here, a little bit of bubbling right there, but this is very solid. Let's find out what's going on here. The magnet sticks. So again, first generation rust. These bubbles within five or six years will come out, but in the meantime, very, very solid. Uh, the rear taillights are here. The lamp here, the lens is not present, but those are readily available from reproduction. The rear bumper with the step is present. I do see a little bit of flaking paint here. It's possible some rust repair happening. Yeah, a little, little bit. The magnet sticks hard here, and it's not so much there. So this area here might have a dent or something hiding underneath. But otherwise, um, it's very solid. I don't see any, any trouble or signs of, of uh, Bondo in this uh, tailgate. Moving around to the passenger side quarter panel. Okay, a little bit of bubbling. Yeah, this stuff right here. Again, first generation rust. The magnet wants to stick to it, so it's not putty. This is, you know, first time rust bloom. Another year or two or three, yeah, that'll, that'll pop through. But again, there are patch panels available for these cars to repair that. Uh, the wheel lip is in fantastic condition. I love the 14-inch steel wheels match the body with the poverty caps. That's standard Savoy stuff. And again, Savoy was the base model in the full-size lineup. A quarter panel's down low, very, very nice. The doors always rust in through here. Not this one, wonderful. And again, the rocker panel, super duper solid. Like it, pop inside, take another look inside. And there it is. And keep in mind, folks, at any point during these videos, you can freeze the frame to see a detail and zoom in and really get the full picture of the car. Uh, this does have carpeting laid down on the floor, and I think that's over the factory rubber floor mat, which is underneath uh, the carpeting. Again, the Savoy being a low-line car would not have had carpeting from the factory. It would have had a rubber floor mat. And again, less can be more, and that's the case with the Savoy. Down low here at the bottom of the fender, Okay, a little bit of rust right there. Very solid, except for this localized spot. And again, the magnet sticks. So this is not uh, Bondo or Putty. That's first-gen rust and easily dealt with. The wheel lip is beautiful all the way up and all the way down. And that is the story of item number 21, a 61 Plymouth Savoy two-door wagon. Very original. You just don't find them anymore. Bid accordingly. Steve here for Asseter Auctioneers Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Event with item number 45, a 1956 Plymouth Suburban Station Wagon. Now this has a great grill, a lot of chrome up here. The V indicates it was once a V8 car, but a peek inside there, there's no engine. And I can't get the hood open, the latch is kind of weird, but again, there's no engine in that, which is okay because this is a very special body and you wouldn't really want to restore it. I think you might want to make this one into a hot rod. This is a two-door suburban station wagon. While most Plymouth wagons were four doors back in the day, a small percentage were sold as two doors, like this one here. And again, it has a sliding glass window here in the back, uh, a fixed pillar. And again, 1956, first year for the Finns as Virgil Exner's forward look began to take root. And here's the term suburban. And again, used by General Motors, but also Plymouth on their station wagon models. A little bit of rust here on the, uh, the roof B pillar, but down low, the thing I love about this one is the quarter panels are very sound, rust-free, beautiful. And again, this is a original paint car, I dare say. A little bit of bubbling here, but that's not a big, big deal. Let's go around the front and have a look down the other side. And inside, we can't get this door open, so, but we can see the dashboard, the steering column, the seat, all the stuff you need to make this look original is there, which is really good news. And again, this is body on frame construction. So if you want to build a hot rod or a pro touring car out of this one here, just take this desirable body off that frame, drop it down onto a roadster shop chassis or a Schwartz chassis, and you know, put in a Hellcat or whatever you want for power, and you would have one heck of a very distinctive two-door wagon. And again, here's that sliding window on the back here, the suburban two-door have a peek maybe inside. Kind of dusty and dirty, but that's fine with me. I'd rather see dust than rust any day. Quarter panels down low. Again, nice and clean. The magnet sticks 
just perfectly all along here. And here we have Virgil Exner's fins. To open this up here, yes, the tailgate opens. All that trim inside there probably would make this car complete. I'm gonna guess that goes with it. And again, a great example of a 1956 Plymouth two-door suburban station wagon. Uh, I would say this one here would be a great hot rod or street rod, but what you do with it is really up to you. Steve Mignone here for Astro Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Event with item number 57, a 1961 Plymouth Valiant Station Wagon. Now we're kind of in some tight quarters here. We're actually in a cow pasture, electric fence, don't want to touch that. So we're going to do this one backwards. And again, station wagon body, pretty uncommon in the Valiant world. Tailgate looks nice, no perforations down low. And again, that's a Texas suntan right there. That is surface rust. That is solid metal, ready for your sanding, priming, and painting. It'll be beautiful. Got to love that character line right there on the roof. The Valiant, again, was uh, Chrysler's first compact model. Down low, the quarter panels are very nice. No perforations. That is good. The wheel lip is fantastic. 13-inch wheels, of course. Left-hand lug nut still in place on the driver's side of Mopars. Here they are here, left hands. Uh, Lefty, loosey, tighty, righty. Not so much here. The opposite applies. Back seat. Nice to see the uh, aqua color still present in the door jams. Uh, inside, yeah, it's pretty much sunburnt, burnt, burnt, and more burnt, but that's okay. I'd rather see this than crust and rust, as you would see if this car was from New England or Ohio or someplace where there's a lot of wa water and rust. Inside, we see the uh, standard steering wheel and dashboard pretty good. The top of the dash is melted. Of course, those go away fast, but beautiful. Between the seats, that three-speed manual on the floor, that is factory equipment. So nice to see a, a three-speed manual. Imagine driving this down the road, you know, first, second, third, shifting gears like a sports car, but it's a station wagon and it's a clean one. Really, really solid bones on this one here. The door up front is nice. No signs of any kind of perforations. The rockers are good. Beautiful front fender, also not showing perforations. Beautiful Valiant logo. And the rust-free nature continues all the way around. And again, that looks like rust. Yes, it's surface corrosion, but that is, we'll call that the Texas suntan. That is not structural in any way. That's beautiful. Okay, open the hood. Yep, slant six. This is the 170. We can tell because there's a lot of room between the heater box and the top of the valve cover. The 225 would be a tall deck with less room. So this is the 170 base slant six, not an aluminum block. This is iron. There were some aluminum ones made, 225s, but this is not one. That's okay. But again, the slant six is backed up by a three-speed manual on the floor. And you gotta love that green aqua paint. The grill is pretty nice. That could be pulled out right there. The Valiant logo always missing, still present and accounted for. Front bumper is pretty decent. Let's go around this side. Again, the um, passenger side front fender is equally nice. Again, no perforations, rust-free. How nice is that? Passenger side door and rocker look fantastic. No bubbling here. Often you'll see it, but not here. Looking good down here. Okay, a little bit of bubbling right there. Not a big deal. I'd rather see that than somebody's Bondo. Let's look inside. Once again, there's the bones of the front bench seat. And again, reupholstering and rebuilding that seat is not a big deal. Better to have the seat in that condition than none. Uh, the quarter panels here also wonderfully rust-free. Bit of a dent right there. And again, there are patch panels and extensions you can buy. Either pull that out or replace it, either or. And back here, you know, looking pretty darn good. So that's the story of item number 57, a 1961 Plymouth Valiant station wagon. These are pretty rare cars. Bid accordingly. Steve Bignani here for Acid Auctioneers the Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Event, and item number 102 is something very weird, but I love it. It's a 1961 Dodge Lancer station wagon that's been sliced into a short wheelbase circus car. Now again, we see it started life as a wagon, of course, 1961, first year for the Lancer, Dodge's version of the Plymouth Valiant, but we can see where the roof's been sliced and the rear door has been made the front door. <laughs> and here we have it, somebody's sort of custom machine from, I would say, probably the 1970s. Inside, it's emptied out, but that dirt probably covers some fairly decent metal. 
can't imagine not. Under the dash, we see the clutch and brake pedals, factory AM radio, and underneath the steering wheel, that tubular thing, that is the custom shortened drive shaft that would connect the back of the transmission to the rear axle. So this thing actually ran at some point. There's no rear axle, no leaf springs, but it looks very, very solid, very sound. Here's the surgery area where the roof was bonded from the front to the back when they removed the uh, rear seat section. The windshield's pretty nice. Again, lot 102. The fenders are very decent. You know, these often are rusted up to here and it doesn't look too bad. And keep in mind, once this is uh, uh, provided to the auction, it will be moved and will be able to be uh, moved out of here, no problem. Now the front grille on this 61 Lancer is in really nice shape. The bumper's not too bad either. The headlight surrounds are good. The fender has taken a bit of a hit on the top, so be it. Under the hood, well, there's nothing here, but I do see uh, the manual steering box. This is a dual circuit master cylinder, probably from a 1967 up application. This would have had a single pot, but that's okay. The trim tag is still here. Uh, and this probably almost certainly was a slant six car when it was new. But this side of the car looks about the same. It seems to be uh, pretty much rust free, hard to see. But again, think of what a cool car this would be. Just get it going again, uh, put a slant six or maybe a 340 in the front, dump the clutch and pull wheelies down the street. But here it is, lot number 102, a shortened 1961 Lancer Station Road.